Hey everyone. Last time I looked this good, it was E3, and we were talking about Nintendo's last Direct. Uh, and, well, I guess E3 Showcase, whatever they wanted to call it, digital event. They have used different names over the years. But here's the thing. Uh, it was really, really good, and it had some good moments. Obviously capped with seeing Breath of the Wild 2 again for the first time in two years. But, despite my hype for that, to me it was just a C to C plus Direct. There have been better ones. In fact, I'd argue when they unveiled Splatoon 3, that potentially was almost a better unveiling in that of itself than almost anything that happened at E3, except for the fact that Metroid Dread occurred. But today, we're actually going to be talking about the new Direct because, well, I did do a live reaction to it, and it's up on the channel, and 5,000 plus of you have tuned in and checked that out. Um, I actually have additional thoughts to give now that it's been a day, um, basically a little over 24 hours since the Direct happened because I've had a chance to sit back and think about it. And I gotta be honest with you, this might be one of the best Directs of all time. And at least for Nintendo, close to perfection. Now, for I talk more on this, I want to remind you that we are giving away a Nintendo Switch OLED. To enter, all you need to do is be subscribed and then come to a live stream that we're doing next week, Friday. Now, setting all that aside, no fancy intro here. We're just going to get right into the conversation. Um, I have all the stuff over here that happened in the Direct, and a lot of it I'll, I, I might skip over. Not that it's not relevant. There was a bunch of you know cool indie games. Delta Rune Chapter 2 for free. Uh, that was a really cool one. Obviously, we had Act Razor Renaissance. You know, which is a remaster of an, a SNES classic, an all-time, obviously the Castlevania Advanced Collection. All of that is great, but what I find interesting is that I feel like this Direct was one of the first ones to truly have something for everybody. And I don't say that very often about these kind of shows. I did praise Sony's show earlier this month, but it didn't necessarily have something for everybody. Not like this Direct did. Uh, and that's what I find so fascinating. Obviously, um, it, it, it's hard to go uh, without talking about 3D Kirby. I mean, we got a 3D Kirby game. Can you guys believe it? I don't know if anybody is aware. This is the first time we've ever had a fully 3D Kirby game. I don't know if we can call it open world yet. I have a feeling it's going to be open world-like. But either way, it's at least going to be similar to kind of the openness that we had in Mario Odyssey, I would assume, where at least levels or stages are going to be open. The point is... We have never had a 3D Kirby game before. And yeah, I have a few minor criticisms, right? I can criticize the fact that there are times in the gameplay that the world looked a little empty. Like there really wasn't much to interact with and enemies. And it felt like there should be more happening on screen. Just like there was in Mario Odyssey. There was always something exciting happening in every screen of the game. There was some action. And it didn't feel like that in this footage. At least for parts of it. Other parts of it felt fantastic. But again, the game's not here yet. It might not be here till summer next year. I know they said spring, so probably an April game, but still, it's not here yet, and there's still time for them to polish and flesh that out. And typically, when we see footage at these events, I already know this based on my actual history of covering Nintendo, we're usually seeing footage that happened like three, four months ago. This is usually is not representative of the current state of the game. And they did note that, you know, in, in the, hey, this is not like final footage or anything, so don't make any harsh judgments so i am cautiously optimistic for it but i'm just glad to see that they're actually treating kirby seriously kirby has been a yearly ip for some time we do not have a kirby game this year and this is probably why because all of their efforts are being put into this game a game that they have promised in prior interviews would be the greatest kirby game of all time maybe it will be we'll see if kirby can successfully transition into a 3d platformer but I'm pretty excited that they're even attempting it. Uh, so that that alone is already making me excited. And I know we're all hoping that Donkey Kong was going to get a similar treatment again, even though we've had it one other time on the N64, which Nintendo, speaking of the N64, they are adding the N64 and the G Sega Genesis to Nintendo Switch Online. And I've seen a lot of reactions over the last 24 hours, at least headlines, where people are being like, hey, nobody expected Genesis. I did. I called it literally the morning of the Direct. I called that Genesis was going to be unveiled and going to be part of Nintendo Switch Online. But that doesn't really matter. What matters is we are getting the systems, and at least according to one insider, Emily Rogers, these are going to be much grander than what we've had in the past. So 
In the past, N64 topped out at 21 games on Virtual Console. And for Sega Genesis, we have that Sega Collection that's 54 games. And supposedly there's going to be more than 54 games when it's all said and done with this Sega Genesis platform. Uh, and obviously we have the controllers, some controversy with the Sega Genesis one because in North America, we're only getting the three button version while in Japan, they're getting the six. To be fair, the six button wasn't the most popular version here in North America, but there are some later games in the Genesis um, library that really took advantage of those six buttons. But whatever, there's lots of third party controllers. And by the way, you don't actually have to use these controllers to play. You can just use the Joy-Cons or a Pro Controller uh, so it is what it is, but it is cool to at least have those controllers as an option for nostalgic reasons. Plus, some people just prefer to play on the original controllers. So that's great. And that is a pseudo advantage over something like emulation, especially with these older controllers, like the N64 controller and the Sega Genesis controller that don't necessarily work with PCs out of the box. It takes a lot of modifications to make them work with PC, or you have to use a third party controller. And 8 Bit Do and others have done excellent jobs making kind of sort of their own replica controllers. So my thing with this whole online thing is that I'm, I need to know the pricing. I don't have an overall reaction until we get pricing. Without pricing, it's hard to know if this is a good value or not, at least to me. Um, not because I'm not excited to play N64 games online. Hello, that's amazing. Mario Kart, um, you know, just it, all those games. F-Zero, you know, all the having online play is great. Um, online leaderboards would be better, but online play is better than not having it. But still, I'm going to temper my expectations on it until I see the pricing, because I am a bit scared that Nintendo's about to offer a $20 expansion pack, which doubles the price, you know, I'm talking per year for an individual, doubles the price of the current one. I might be willing to pay that at least to check it out for that first year, but I don't know that it's necessarily something I'm going to want to keep paying for based on my track record of not really playing a lot of retro games. There's only a handful of really old games that I care to replay. And N64 does happen to have a couple of those, like Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask, even though I've replayed those games so many times, especially after they came to the 3DS. Still, it's good that we're getting them, and it does add value to Nintendo Switch Online, at least sort of, not really to the current service, but the more expensive one. Some people are wondering, where the hell is Game Boy and Game Boy Color? <sighs> Just wait. Just trust me on this one. Just wait. They're still going to be they're, they're, they're going to be there. Just wait like 6 months, all right? Just 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 trust me on that one. That being said, uh there there was a lot of cool things and, and one thing I, I think that has brought down the direct for some people was the Mario movie announcement, which no one, you know, okay, they announced uh, basically an exact release day of of the movie happening next year here in North America, and that's great, but they announced the voice cast and I think that this was actually really really good. Um, I had some initial shock, obviously, because I definitely didn't expect Chris Pratt to be the voice of Mario. Um, I didn't expect Jack Black to be the voice of Bowser. Uh, Key to come in as Toad. Like, I didn't expect some of these castings that they did. Uh, maybe the one for Princess Peach was the one I maybe expected the most. She was definitely one of the people I thought would make a good voice for Peach. Uh, but what I find interesting here is setting aside the kind of meme-tastic way that Miyamoto called Chris Pratt cool. It was... That was pretty cringe, Miyamoto. I actually really like what they're doing here with the Mario movie. This is exactly the direction I internally hoped they were going to go because while I wasn't sure what would make a successful Mario movie, and again, we don't know if this is going to be successful or even good, what I will say is Nintendo is fully buying in, as is DreamWorks and Illuminations, and they're fully buying in on creating a Mario movie that isn't like the video games. The number one thing to me that makes video game adaptions to movies suck is when they try to be like the game. The reason the Sonic movie to me worked is because they weren't trying to be like the video games. They did their own thing. They told their own story. They created their own way that things worked, like the teleportation with the rings. Like They created their own way of doing things. And that, to me, led to the Sonic movie, obviously with Jim Carrey being the perfect pick for the villain, um, kind of being perfect, in a way, for what that movie could be. And I feel this about Mario. Mario is a character that doesn't talk very much. Uh, he does talk, he does have a voice, so does Toad, so does Bowser. All these characters talk, but they always talk sparingly, and obviously with the voice of Charles Matinee. And he's still in there, probably voicing a few side characters. Wouldn't work in a movie. 
And let me clearly explain why. If you're going to have a movie where the characters are talking and talking a lot, which they didn't have to go that direction, but I had a feeling they would. And if you're going to do that, you don't want to use those original voices. And the reason you don't want to use them is, have you ever listened to Charles Matinee going on a prolonged, like, multiple paragraph talking as Mario before? I have. Have you heard the Toad voice going on and on for over a minute? I have. If you listen to these voices, they're kind of annoying. They work in small snippets. The wahoo, here we go. Like that, all that stuff works. It works in small snippets. It doesn't really work for more long form conversations. Uh, so honestly, one of my greatest fears is that they were going to stick with that and it was going to feel super childish and it really wasn't going to work. It was going to be just too wrong fitting. They were going to try to make the game itself be a movie. And now, I don't think that's happening at all. You know, when Miyamoto mentions the cool factor of Chris Pratt, as meme-tastic as that is, it's more so that he obviously were referencing that Mario is talking a lot in this movie. A lot. And they wanted somebody who's good at that. Now, we can argue whether Chris Pratt's the right choice. I don't know, but based on the whole casting, they definitely are trying to make this a comedy film. And I like that. It's going to be a family film, but it's going to be a comedy film. There's probably going to be jokes in it that maybe only adults are going to get. One of those, kind of like how Disney sometimes has some jokes in it that adults understand, but kids have no idea what's going on. I kind of feel like it's going to have that kind of vibe. When you got Seth Rogen in there, you know, as Donkey Kong, and some people think unironically he's actually a good choice for it. I think unironically, all of these guys are actually good choices for it. Now, I understand some criticisms that how the hell is uh, Chris Pratt going to play an Italian plumber? Um, one, Mario has never really sound like an Italian plumber anyways. Uh, so there's that. Uh, two, the original voice actor obviously wasn't an Italian person. Uh, and beyond all of that, does it really matter? It's a fictional made-up character. You know, I, I always take issue with people bring that stuff up. It's like, who cares? Look, you don't have to like Chris Pratt. You don't have to like that he's voicing Mario. But I, I'm, I'm excited by it. To me, this was all the right casting choice for what they're trying to do. They're basically saying, forget what Mario's ever been. We're redoing Mario the way we want to do it in a funny way. And I'm glad they're just fully buying in and going all out. And it might crash and burn. It might not work. Most video game adaptions don't. But sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. If Ryan Reynolds can be Pikachu. Hello? Sounds nothing like Pika Pika. Sounds nothing like that. If Ryan Reynolds can be Pikachu, yeah, Chris Pratt can be Mario. Yeah, like I, I understand you might like Ryan Reynolds more, but it worked out pretty well for Detective Pikachu, didn't it? So let's just wait and see what happens. Uh, but I honestly think that this was a, an overall positive thing. It is weird to announce a voice cast now without having a trailer. Probably could have waited for the trailer, but it is what it is. Trailer's probably coming next year. But beyond all that, this direct had a lot. Bayonetta 3. I should have saw Bayonetta 3 coming um, ahead of time. I didn't, so it was a bit more surprising to me. Only because Bayonetta 3 and the new Kirby game technically leaked both of them on Nintendo's Japanese website ahead of time. Uh, we actually got a screenshot for Kirby, but we didn't for uh, Bayonetta. We just got the name. But yeah, Bayonetta 3. I think it looks great. Um, you know, I, I think it looks really good, especially on Switch. Um, I, there's been some weird reactions where some people say it looks like a PS2 game or Bayonetta isn't as sexy, I guess, because she's not as scantily clad at this exact moment. That might change throughout the game. I don't know. Uh, maybe because the voice actor has changed, so it doesn't sound like Bayonetta in the last two games. I don't know. But Platinum could have used the last voice actor. They could have did whatever they wanted. I highly doubt anything in this game has been slowed down or changed because of Nintendo's request. Nintendo let Bayonetta 2 happen, so why the hell would they change things now? Bayonetta is what Bayonetta is. It's just exciting. I think this has the chance to be a 5 plus million seller, maybe more because the Switch, everything on Switch just seems to sell like gangbusters. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I thought it actually looked really, really good. I am a fan of the Bayonetta series. I have beaten Bayonetta 1 and 2. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I'm just excited to see the continuation of the Umbra Witch and maybe happiest for... <laughs> Platinum Games, who no longer has to field questions every day about why we haven't seen Bayonetta 3. Now we have, and now they can actually talk about it a little bit, at least as much as Nintendo's letting them do it. Um, another really great showing was obviously bringing Splatoon 3 back. 
Um, seeing Splatoon 3 again just kind of confirms that the game is on schedule and probably going to be coming early next year. Uh, that, that's about all we could take out of that. Splatoon 3 uh, looked great. Um, I don't have any complaints about it. I love that they're continuing the wonky way they've been advertising it for the entire last two entries by treating everything as if it's new research and all that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Splatoon 3, gangbuster game. Um, but even that Project Triangle strategy, right? Some people might not be into it, but those that are really into it, and it looks like that might be the big game Nintendo's banking on for March. Maybe they push one of these other games into March. I don't know. But right now, that's kind of the big exclusive game in March anyways. Um, and then we got new DLC for Monster Hunter Rise, and it's massive DLC, mega DLC, like a major expansion pack that's happening next summer. Uh, yeah, for Monster Hunter Rise fans, pfft. That's a huge announcement. Didn't really see any gameplay of it, but still a pretty huge announcement that you're getting major, like a major expansion. Um, there was a couple things that were kind of like, what? So Animal Crossing's finally getting its big update, but we're gonna get a separate event for it next month. Smash Bros. character, gonna get unveiled next month. Well, I think next week, or no, the week after. So in two weeks, we're getting the reveal of of, of a new character in Smash, the final character, a 40-minute Sakurai Presents thing, like he does for a lot of the characters, except you sometimes they're unveiled before the present. Usually what happens is they get unveiled at like a direct, and then they do a Presents later. Here they're just doing it all at once, which is, is fine. Um, I think some people would have felt like this direct would have been an A++ if they would have brought the Animal Crossing update and the Smash character reveal into this show. Uh, but Nintendo's got marketing to worry about, and, and spacing out the marketing is for the best. Like they didn't announce the price point of the online services, which does make me tepid thinking Nintendo knows it might be a negative reaction. So for now they want the positive reactions of N64 and Genesis, kind of brush the negative reactions under the table by having it not happen out of direct. Uh, but that's just a gut feeling I have, I don't know. Uh, but still, uh, Mario Party Superstars uh, looked really, really damn good. Talked about some of the new, uh, the, the returning courses we're gonna see. All 100 mini games, by the way, now have a smidge of footage on the Japanese website, so you can actually see all of them in action. I have actually watched all of them. I saw a compilation video earlier today, and it looked really, really, really good. Um, obviously, we got you know nice announcements like the original Kotar is coming, Knights of the Old Republic is coming. That's fantastic. That's coming in November. Um, you know, it, there, there's just a lot of really, really good stuff here. I mean, heck, even like that card game they show. What was it called? The Yoko Taro's card rpg voice of cards so voice of cards um like it's coming this october and honestly i'm not that into this kind of stuff i i i like card combat but more so in like botan kato's kind of rpgs but seriously this was really really good looking for what it was um and credit to them for actually getting it in a nintendo direct that's a lot of attention um to a game like that that wouldn't exist without a direct um, obviously, we have all the Dying Light announcements that were cool, too, like Dying Light 2 Stay Humans coming. It's a cloud version, and, you know, the cloud version is going to work best on Switch OLED. So everyone's talked about the advantages of Switch OLED are only importable, but because it has a one gigabyte Ethernet port that you can't get those same speeds on the current dock with a dongle, cloud versions of games in dock mode are actually going to run best on Switch OLED. Fun fact about that. Um, or you could just say Switch OLED's dock. I guess you can use... You just buy the dock, but the docks are always hard to buy on their own. So I guess the dock is more of the impressive thing there. But yeah, that's really, really good. I'd rather have the game than not. And uh, yeah, I'll probably try out the cloud version. They'll have a free trial the day of launch, which is cool so people can see if it actually runs well for them. I like free trials for these cloud games so people can actually test them before they buy them so they don't waste their money. Very big kudos uh, to all the devs out there that are doing this. Or maybe Nintendo's requiring that they do it. Uh, but that's cool. And then, obviously, we have the other Dying Light um, collection at pack that's coming. Uh, and that's, like, looks like that's playing locally on Switch. But those are even older games, so shouldn't be too hard to make them look good. Uh, we obviously got an update on, on new stuff coming to Mario Golf Super Rush. I mentioned uh, Deltarune a bit before. Deltarune Chapter 2 for free. Finally. Been waiting a long time for that. Um, Chocobo GP coming back, right? We've This is actually, like, almost like a pseudo-remake of a really old PS1 game. Uh, but yeah, it's back, and it looks really good. It, it's basically Final Fantasy Mario Kart. And I don't think there's anything wrong with a little bit of Final Fantasy Mario Kart. Then we got Disco Elysium. Again, that looked great. We had uh, that Disney Magical World uh, enhanced port from 3DS. Okay, cool. Um, Age of Calamity DLC. I mean, ugh, that DLC actually looked really, really good. 
Um, I'm excited for that. It's it's story DLC, which hell yeah. Um, you know, we had Shadowrun Trilogy um, bringing three classics to the Switch. Rune Factory 5, a brief showing, which I actually played Rune Factory 5. Um, so, like, to me, this was practically perfection. I don't know what more I could ask. We could require Metroid Prime 4 needs to be there. Um, Game Boy should have been announced. Uh, the Smash character should have been announced. Breath of the Wild 2 should have been there. Super Mario Odyssey 2 should have Mario Kart 9. And it's true that over the next year, there might be other directs that have a bigger end game than Bayonetta 3, right? Metroid Prime 4 might be considered a bigger deal than Bayonetta 3 to many people. A Mario Kart 9 might be a bigger deal. A Super Mario Odyssey 2 might be a bigger deal. There have, like Splatoon 3, so far has been the biggest end of direct announcement of the year, even bigger than this. But from start to finish, this was a complete direct. And we don't get complete, usually there's so much fluff, but it felt like a complete direct to me. Some of you are gonna say, I hit the snooze button for a while, Bayonetta 3 woke me up, or Kirby woke me up. That's fine. I get it. A lot of us judge every direct based on, hey, was this direct appealing to me personally? Was every game shown something I'm interested in? I don't judge directs based on if every game shown I'm interested in. I can tell you right now, I probably won't buy a majority of what was in that direct. But what I can do is try to take my bias out, look at it objectively and go, damn, there was a lot of really good looking games in that direct. A lot of them. A lot of high quality games in a wide variety of genres. Plus some experimental stuff with Kirby. I mean, whether or not it's good or not, credit to Nintendo for at least trying. I mean, I hope it's good. I hope they don't blow it. But still, this Direct to me is about as good as Nintendo can put together a Direct. This might even top most of the Directs during the Iwata years. Might be controversial to say that, but uh, I honestly think those Directs were a little bit overhyped for what they were. Um, it, they were just new at the time, and I think when you look back at some of them, it's go, cool. yeah, there were some good announcements, but from start to finish, the only thing that really felt cool was obviously some of the little skits, and we don't get the skits anymore, uh, but whatever. The skits don't make a direct. The, what's in the direct makes the direct. Um, so, yeah, kudos to Nintendo, baby. You brought the goods. Now, obviously, I want to see all you guys react to this down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on the direct, your favorite game shown at the direct. Um, how I did in this video, did you gain anything out of it? Probably not. That's all right, except for the fact that I kind of look good in a suit. All right, folks, thank you so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Rebel Jance, and I'll catch you in the next video.